Hello, Salam alaikum, it's Dr. Daniel Bishwar, uh, from your doctor, uh, GP from UK. Today I'm going to present hair loss. If you didn't come across my channel, the reason why I opened it just to increase the awareness about, fam about common cases uh, um, a family doctor will see, uh, just to increase the awareness. So before we speak about the common causes of hair loss, we're going to speak a bit, a bit about the anatomy of the hair. As you can see, this is the hair. And you have, and what exactly what you see is just from this part here. So you have the hair shaft. And then you have this is the skull, but underneath the skull, like or like or in the skin itself of your skull, as you can see, it consists here of three layers. So this is the outer layer, which is the thin layer. And then you have the middle layer where all of the hair uh, follicle goes inside, and then you have the third layer, which has like some fats here. So this is the hair follicle. Each hair follicle it supplies with blood supply. So these are blood supplies, and then also you have the nerve. Again, this picture shows like the anatomy of the hair. So you have like, this is the hair, uh, this is the blood supply and nerve supply. Again, even, uh, I, I, I don't really want to go into detail uh, because it's quite like, because mm, I'm trying to avoid like medical terms, but just like briefly, as you can see, even the hair itself, it consists of three layers. This is, these are the three layers of the hair. And then again, before we go to the causes, briefly we're going to speak about the hair uh, cycle because uh, it's quite important. Uh, why? Because I have one of the hair loss, one of the famous hair loss conditions, uh, which I'm going to speak about it in uh, a later slide. It's uh, the hair. Um, unfortunately, it moves from uh, the growth phase straight away into the death phase. So that's why it's important to know this, this uh, the cycle of the hair. So in a simple way, you have three phases of of your hair cycle. You have the growth phase, which is called the anagen, and that's where 90% of your hair is in it. It lasts from three to five years, can go up to seven years. And then you have the resting phase, which is called uh, the catagen, and that lasts only up to 10 days. 5% uh, of your hair is in the resting phase. And then you have the last phase, which is the death phase, and that's where all of the hair start falls, and that's called the telogen. It lasts only up to three months. 10 to 15% of your hair will be in the, in the death phase. Again, this, uh, th this picture shows the, like how the hair cycle goes. So you have here the anagen, when, when the hair is nourished, it's, uh, it's attached to, to, the, to the bulb or to the hair follicle, it's attached to the blood supply and to, to the nerve. Um, and then you have the catagen, which is only 10 days. It's like, um, it's, it's like, a, a, yeah, a, like, like a phase between, between the growth and, uh, and the death phase. And then you have the last one, the death phase, where as you can see here, the hair shaft is detached from uh, from the hair bulb itself, and it doesn't have any blood supply, so it's dead, and it's just like ready to fall straight away. Uh, on microscopic uh, level, um, this picture shows the difference between the hair follicle when it when it is in the growth phase. That how that this is exactly how it looks like, and when it's in the death phase, um, this is how it looks like. It's quite closed. So this one is open, but this one is closed. And it's dead. Sorry, this is a busy slide. I'm not going to go into details of, about this one, but just to show you, like, how many causes for hair loss. There's loads of causes, but usually this this is for, like, for doctors or for dermatologists or uh, family doctors with special interest in dermatology. So today I'm just going to cover the most common of the common <laughs> causes for hair loss. So let's go with the first one, which is a fungal infection. It's quite common among uh, kids. Um, usually it presents like this. Uh, so it, it could be a fungal infection. Well, if somebody suffers from a problem like this, if they go to their, their dermatologist or maybe to a family doctor, uh, a GP, he will take, a, first of all, he will take a swab uh, and then send it uh, to the lab to see, well, if it was a fungal infection, it will come back positive. If, if it comes back negative, it could be something else like psoriasis or eczema. If it was positive, it, if, for, for instance, if it was a fungal infection, it needs to be treated with topical antifungal cream or maybe like uh, your doctor will give you some uh, oral uh, antifungal tablets. And uh, if it was negative and your doctor thought well, it could be eczema or psoriasis, then he, he's going to treat basically with eczema. It will be steroid creams or ointments. And uh, if it was psoriasis, it could be like maybe corticosteroids, also cream, uh, or even like vitamin D creams. So that will be the first one. That, that, the first one, which is like the, the fungal infection, or even if it was psoriasis, or even if it was eczema, usually it is, the hair loss is reversible. So 
When it's reversible, we call it non-scarring. So non-scarring, that means the hair follicle is still alive, it's not dead. There are some conditions in hair loss, and that's where um, the hair follicle is dead, and that's where you have the, the tissue itself, like the, or, or like the hair follicle, it dies, and it's, it becomes like a scar. And it, it gets converted into a fibrous tissue, and that's like, like any scar. For example, in our body, it's usually like it gets healed with a fibrous tissue. So if it was in the hair, you get uh, the problem that if, if it gets converted to a fibrous tissue and it becomes a scar, that means the hair follicle has, has died. That means it's non-reversible. So, uh, so there are some, but to be honest, it's usually like not, it's usually like, um, not a lot, not a lot of cases which, uh, of hair loss which can, um, which can lead to like non-scarring hair loss or like non-reversible hair loss. So, for example, this is one of the causes which can lead to reversible, uh, non-reversible, sorry, hair loss, which is uh, scarring alopecia. So that means, um, so that means it's it's gonna get like healed with a scar, and it's gonna the hair folk will die on, on the long term. And this cause is uh, trichotillomania. It's usually it's there's an underlying psychotic problem. Uh, it's when patients like start to pull the hair in a very nervous way. It's like a kind of uh, type of self harm. Uh, this is usually like, as I said, like a psychotic underlying problem. Um, it could be maybe like a person like um, went into uh, they suffered from abuse, whether it was physical or even emotional abuse when when they're little, and they even could suffer from depression. And it comes, it presents as. Um, as I said, like self-harm. There are many types of self-harm. Uh, sometimes, like, um, from my experience, like patients sometimes they overdose, they might, like, cut themselves. Uh, sometimes even they might pull their, uh, their hair in chunks, whether they self-harm or even if they have, like, other psychotic problems. There are many, many causes for um, a person to pull their hair in chunks, but that means that usually if somebody, if, if, you're, if, if a family doctor, if they think, uh, well, it could be a psychotic problem, that's why somebody's having a hair loss, because they're pulling it. In this case, usually the, the treatment has to be like through a psychiatric doctor, so a referral to a psychiatric will be done. Uh, as I said, the problem on the long term, it can um, get like, you know, um, the, the, the hair itself, it may not come back because it can lead to a scar, that's the problem. And then you have like other types of, of hair loss, which is usually usually reversible, uh, such as like uh, if somebody has a problem with the thyroid gland, whether it was overactive or underactive, or if they have diabetes and the diabetes is not well controlled, or if they have like nutritional deficiency, uh, such as uh, uh, iron deficiency. So how can you know it? By uh, usually your doctor will do some blood tests. They will just check like the iron level. They'll check the iron storage, which is called the ferritin. Usually dermatology, uh, dermato dermatologists, they like their ferritin to be above 70 to maintain hair growth. I know the lab will tell you maybe, they will tell like, well, your ferritin, even if it's from 15 to 30, that should be okay. But actually, actually, it should be above 70 to maintain hair growth. So just double check about like if your, if your doctor, your GP, if they take some blood, just ask about the ferritin and try always like to eat like food uh, full of like iron such as like um, maybe the liver of the sheep or maybe uh, of course uh, meat, spinach, um, uh, all of this like uh, like yeah food which is you can all it's very easy you can just google it and write like food um, which is uh, rich in, in iron and then also biotin, zinc, uh, vitamin D, uh, B12 and folate, uh, biotin and zinc that would not get checked in the UK uh, unless you go private, but the vitamin D will get checked, B12 and folate will get checked. And that's another cause of uh, hair loss which is called traction alopecia. So what's the meaning of traction? That means pulling. Usually you'll find it in um, in African, uh, African um, uh, people because they do like plaits and then on top of the plaits sometimes they put like uh, they attach hair to it so unfortunately that would put a lot of strain and a lot of pressure on the hair follicle and uh, this can lead to a scar that can lead to scarring alopecia and that that, that means the hair loss can be um, can be like uh, non-reversible you can't reverse it another thing which is quite similar to this one uh, even extensions hair extensions again that can put put pressure on the hair on the hair follicle I don't want to frighten you in case if you did the hair extension just once, but try not to do it on a regular level because you might end up having a, like traction alopecia. Another thing, even maybe like like putting your hair in a, in a specific uh, position, like if, if you, you always do like um, if you always do like a ponytail, uh, try to to wear your hair a bit like loose. 
just make like just to be like more gentle with the hair and, and not to put any strain or pressure on the hair follicle. Hopefully, I explained it like in a, in a simple way. Uh, and then you have like uh, one of the other causes, which is uh, called telusium flovum. Remember about the hair follicle when I explained about it when I said well. Um, when I said there is one of the hair, uh, like hair loss conditions, and that's where uh, the hair loss, it gets, uh, that, sorry, that's where uh, the hair, it gets converted straight away from the growth phase and goes straight away uh, to, the, to the death phase, to the telogen. And it's not only one hair, it's usually most of the hair. So that's where um, a person would say, well, like all of my hair, it's falling in chunks. So that's what's called illusion flow from. And it's usually because the body went into a shock, whether it was emotional or physical. Okay, so what are the physical shock or stress, which, uh, for example, like uh, a body can go into, which can lead to illusion flow from? The most famous one is delivery. Uh, if a woman delivers a baby, if she has a C-section or even normal delivery, that's a shock to the body. Or if somebody have, having a surgery, or if they go into ITU, uh, or if they have like severe mental stress, if they have severe depression or bereavement, somebody died in the family, all of that can cause into shock. So remember the hair cycle. When I said like the, the, the growth cycle, it can last up to five years, and then you have the catagen here in between 10 days, and then you have the telogen, which is the death phase, three months. So, so for example, if somebody has telogen of flow, what will happen? that they, they will start to, to notice three months after, for example, if somebody had a surgery, if they, or if they went to an ITU, or if she had delivery. When you ask her, when did you start to have a hair loss? It's not straight away, it's after three months. She will tell you, well, I had the surgery, for example, three months ago, or I had bereavement or any problem or severe depression three months ago, but now, after three, four months, now I'm noticing my hair is going to chunks. As I said, because like the hair from the anagen, from the growth phase, it went all straight to the, to the, to the death phase. But what did I say about the death phase, the telogen? It lasts up to three months. So, so it's not straight away, it's going to fall. So what happened, because the body went to, to, to shock, all of the hair went, it converted here, and then the, t the telogen is three months. So that's why after three months, they will say, oh, like all of my hair, is, it's, it's, it's falling into chunks. That's, so hopefully, it's, uh, hopefully I explained it like, uh, I explained it well. It's, this is a bit confusing sometimes, but so... The good news about telogen flow is that this is reversible, it's non-scarring. So although it's, it's, it can be like really frightening for women to lose their hair, especially if, if they gave up a baby, they, they gave, sorry, they gave a baby, they delivered the baby, and, um, and they start to lose hair three months after, that can be quite scary and frightening. But it's usually just reassurance and maybe doing like some bloods and checking the skull. That's what your doctor will usually do. And uh, with some like maybe extra treatment, which I'm gonna ex which I'll explain about in future slides, um, the hair usually like uh, the prognosis is good, and the hair usually comes back. So this is how it looks like. It, it could look like this. It could like uh, look better or even worse. It depends from from a person to a person. And then you have another type, which is uh, alopecia areata. It's th this is um, it's because. It's an autoimmune disease, so that means the, the body, uh, the immune system is attacking the body, it's attacking the hair follicle, it's just treating it as, as if it's a foreign body. Um, so this this uh, slide shows like this is a normal one, this is a normal hair, fo hair follicle, and then you have this hair follicle, it's all attacked uh, with the immune system, immune system in the body, it is white cells, so it's like that's the the army which attacks, um, which it should attack uh, foreign um, foreign bodies such as like pathogens, whether it was bacteria or virus, that's how, that's why God created it. But the problem with autoimmune disease that because it's a disease, what happened that instead of attacking the pathogen or other things, they start attacking um, the body itself. So for example, like um, in alopecia areata, it starts to treat uh, the hair as if it's a pathogen. Um, and then it, it, it leads to to the hair like just to fall straight away. There are other autoimmune diseases uh, such as a thyroid. It's an autoimmune disease whether it was active or underactive and then also you have diabetes type 1. Uh, it is uh, also an autoimmune disease. You have uh, psoriasis, uh, eczema, asthma. All of these are, are all of this is autoimmune disease. The, the immune system is just aggressive and attacking the organs of the body. So it's it's alopecia areata. It's different. There's loads of types of alopecia areata. It could look like this, uh, like like patches, 
or it could uh, or it could look like diffuse so it's different and usually the treatment will be that your doctor will refer uh, will refer to a dermat uh, to a dermatology department or your family doctor if you're in the UK will give you some treatment to suppress the immune uh, system such as like maybe like cortisone topical like uh, ointments uh, of cortisone sometimes even cortisone injection uh, yeah, the dermatology department they might give you some uh, phototherapy. There are other like treatment which the dermatologist will um, will discuss if somebody is suffering from alopecia areata. And it can be uh, alopecia areata. It is reversible. The the hair follicle will not die unless like it doesn't get treated and stays for a long time. The hair follicle might like you know become like small, but it's usually it's non-scarring. And then you have like the last type which I'm going to speak about. Um, and it's very common, very famous. Uh, it's usually among men, but it also can come among women. It's called androgenic alopecia. The other name for it is, is male pattern baldness and even female pattern baldness. And uh, the reason, the pathophysiology or the reason behind it, we have the testosterone which usually gets in the body. It's the male hormone. It's usually get converted into another hormone called the hydrotestosterone. So what happens, uh, genetically, some people, um, they inherit this gene where the hair follicle, the receptors on the hair follicle is quite sensitive to the hydrotestosterone. So it's not because, for example, if a female uh, has like uh, androgenic alopecia, it's not that the hair testosterone is high. It's, some women, they might get frightened, oh, my, my testosterone might be high. No, it's not because of that. It's because the receptors in the hair follicle is, uh, is sensitive to the hydrotestosterone. And it could look like this, it could look like a bit mild, it could uh, look even like worse. It, as I said, it's different from a person to a person. So it could look like this, these are the types of them. So the treatment for it, it's usually, unfortunately, androgenic alopecia is not considered really as a disease uh, in, uh, uh, which needs like treatment over the NHS. Um, it's usually the treatment will be privately. Um, so the treatment over the counter, you can buy uh, minoxidil, whether it was two percent for women or five percent for men. Minoxidil, uh, it's it, w what is minoxidil? It's a treatment. Um, initially, it was used as an antihypertensive. So that means like it's, uh, it's it was given initially like as tablets to lower the blood pressure uh, by. And how do they? Uh, how does it lower the blood pressure by dilating the blood vessels? Uh, so. What happened by researchers, uh, they noticed that one of uh, the side effects of this blood pressure medication that leads to uh, growing uh, the hair, uh, could be around the face or even like, especially it's around, uh, especially on the, uh, like on the head itself. So the scientists after that, they said, well, why we don't use this side effect of this medication and um, make a spray out of it uh, with a concentration of 2% or 5% and then spray it topical straight away on the head and that will dilate the, the blood vessels and that can lead to, um, to hair growth. How does it lead to hair growth? Because when you have dilated blood vessels, remember that, the, that picture which I showed about the hair follicle and how it's supplied with blood supply, uh, with blood vessels, sorry. So all of these blood vessels, when it gets dilated, that means more blood, more oxygen, more nutrients go to the hair and that leads to more hair growth. Uh, so, as I said, yeah, there's topical monoxide, but there's also like new scientific uh, study shows that actually the dermatologists are starting to give even oral monoxide, not only for blood vessel, uh, not sorry, not only for <laughs> for um, for high blood pressure, but it's also used in a low dose as a tablet, 25 milligram. It is given also uh, for uh, androgenic alopecia for hair loss, and that can lead to um, better results sometimes, even from typical treatment. Um, so that is the first treatment. And then you have the other treatment, which is the finasteride and also spiralactone. And I'm going to speak about them like briefly. So finasteride, remember when I said like here that the reason behind uh, androgenic alopecia, that the testosterone gets uh, converted into dihydrotestosterone. So we want something, we want a treatment, we want a medication which can uh, which can break the cycle, which can fight the dihydrotestosterone because, as we said, androgenic alopecia is to the receptors of the hair follicle, which is sensitive to dihydrotestosterone. So if we, if we suppress the dihydrotestosterone, then we can treat androgenic alopecia. So there's another treatment which privately, it's not over the NHS because it is considered as something cosmetic. A dermatologist, and not 
not every private dermatologist will give that. Some private dermatologists, you need to like uh, maybe search for some private hospitals if you need that. But again, this that, that can be quite pricey. Can, uh, sometimes even this waiting list on dermatologists can it be up to three months. It can cost like up to 200, 300 pounds. I'm not really sure if it was in the UK. If it was in, if it's not in the UK, if it's an Arab country, you're gonna go straight to the dermatologist there. Um, so, so yeah, the, the finished treat, uh, that can uh, suppress the dihydrotestosterone. Um, it's usually given like, it's called like propatia, it's one milligram. Finacid is usually given, uh, it can be given to men. Of course, even finacid has lots of side effects, it will be difficult to like, cover everything today. Uh, but it has like some side effects which usually like the dermatologist or your uh, family doctor usually like will uh, discuss with you about them. Uh, sorry, it's, it will not be the it will not be your family doctor because your family doctor is not licensed to give this and even a dermatologist over the NHS will not give you that. So your private dermatologist, if you if you consider to start, fin if you think about starting finasteride, I want to discuss more about it, your private dermatologist will discuss with you about the side effects, which has, because it has some side effects, even for men. For women, it's usually it's not given finasteride for women uh, because the problem with finasteride, uh, if a woman gets pregnant, it's... Uh, can cause it's teratogenic. It can uh, affect the um, uh, the genitals of the baby if it was a male. Um, so that's why if a woman want, some dermatologists might they might prescribe finasteride for women, but they may need to make sure that she doesn't get pregnant because if she gets pregnant, that can harm the baby. And even if men take it, they need to make sure. I think if the woman uh, doesn't get pregnant, so that's why it has to be it has to be uh, prescribed by a specialist. You can't just go and buy it like from a pharmacy over the counter. I strongly. Uh, advice against that. Um, so yeah, finasteride with minoxidil. What is given to women? It's another thing. It's not finasteride. It's spironolactone, and that and that even spironolactone, even that one has side effects, but it will not affect like the. It's not teratogenic. Um, it will not affect like um, the genitals of of the child like finasteride. But even that one has side effects, and again, it has to be discussed with with a dermatologist, with a specialist, um, privately. If, if, somebody, if a woman has androgenic alopecia and she's thinking about having like a treatment uh, private. So that's the second, uh, that's the second uh, treatment, um, which, is, which is like just newly over the researchers like in the recent years. And that's uh, the minoxidil. Um, there's like loads of like brands, uh, but this is the most famous one, Rogaine. It's an American brand. Uh, so yeah, we so yeah we spoke about the private one, which is not on the NHS. So so if if somebody is having like uh, androgenic alopecia, if you go to your GP or a family doctor, they will tell you straight away this will not get covered. So as you can see, the topical minoxidil or minoxidil, and then also spoken about uh, the treatment which suppressed the uh, the dihydrotestosterone as finasteride and spironolactone. And then there's another one which is called um, uh, PRP. Uh, and that's plasma. So what is plasma? It's usually like, again, it has to be private and it's, it can cost a lot of money. And it's usually when uh, you're uh, on private, what they're gonna do, they're gonna um, they take the blood and they'll put it in um, in a machine, which is uh, centrifugation. And that's where the, pl uh, the plasma uh, gets divided from the blood and then it, it gets, and then that, the doctor will take the plasma and they will inject it, inject it in the scalp. Again, it, there's no s enough scientific evidence which show, well, you know, it really works, but, some some researchers and some like uh, some doctors were promised. They said, "Well, you can see some improvement." So, so it can be used if somebody's desperate. But they they have to be prepared that well. It's first of all, it may not work. The second thing, well, it could cost a lot of money. And then you have stem cell therapy. Again, this is private, uh, and that's where uh, the stem cells get uh, get. Um, um, uh, gets taken from fat, fat, fat in the body, uh, and it's usually like a minor surgery under uh, local anesthesia, where it's done. Uh, it's done by by uh, a specialist uh, again in a private place. I'm not sure in the UK if, if there's something like this. It's quite a trend in in America now. Um, and then after that, they take this. Uh, when when they take this, uh, they put it in, a, uh, in the same machine like the plasma, like the stem, like. Um, like uh, sorry, like the PRP uh, or the, the the hair plasma. It's the same thing. The stem cell. They put it in a machine which is called a centrifugation uh, machine, and that's where they divide it. They divide all of the stem cells uh, from the fat, and then they inject it again in the head. Actually, in the scalp. That's where they inject it with a small like uh, with a small uh, injection. 
again, there's no like uh, enough uh, scientific evidence which show that it really works. And usually, we're speaking about thousands. It will cost a person, and can be quite frustrating if after like paying all of this, they don't get uh, they don't get uh, good results. And then you have garlic. Um, there isn't a lot of researches about garlic, but um, it's known in Arab culture, in Indian culture, that uh, garlic is quite good uh, for the hair. The problem with it, it's, um, it can cause like a bit of redness, the smell. Uh, you have to maybe wash your hair many times just to get rid of the smell. Your hands also, the, the smell might stick on the hands. So that's, but even if there isn't enough researchers, like sometimes you, you just follow, yeah, I mean, if it has been done like over many years, over centuries, um, that's what our like our grand grand grandfathers do. So maybe it's worth trying. Um, even this is a trend, um, the derma ruler. So the derma ruler basically it's um, it causes like small like minor like uh, minor abrasions in the scalp, and that can stimulate uh, hair growth by stimulating also the collagen. Um, by stimulating healing, you know, when you have like any injury happen in your body, your body itself will try to heal. So that process of healing, of stimulation, that can cause maybe like, well, the hair will start to grow because it gets stimulated. The hair follicle will start to like try to produce a hair. Um, one of the side effects, what are the side effects of the dermal? It is painful because as you can see, it's microneedling. So that's quite painful. Another thing, when the process itself, when somebody is doing it, you might cut the hair itself. And of course, infection, that's the main problem. So if you want to go ahead with Dermarul, I can give it a try. You might use Amla cream. You can buy it from uh, over the counter from the pharmacy. Put Amla cream for maybe 30 minutes and then do the Dermarul. Make sure that you disinfect the Dermarul by using uh, spirit or any like alcohol, alcoholic um, a disinfection, a disinfection solution uh, that to make sure that um, that because you, you don't really want to get an infection in the scalp. So that's one of the problems with it. And then you have here the laser cap, uh, which has like all of the infrared radiation. Uh, I mean, I don't, again, this is quite pricey. I don't know how much it costs. I don't know even if there's like enough scientific evidence. I don't. I don't think there's enough like scientific researchers behind this, but. I guess like the hair itself, uh, it's it's very similar to a plant. You know, when you have a plant, you give it nutri uh, nutrition, uh, you give it uh, a good environment, you give it sun. So the same thing, if, uh, if somebody is having like hair loss, you might need to give it everything. Make sure that the iron level, the vitamin D, all of, give it vitamin, uh, give it, uh, yeah, you give like all of the vitamin, you can have maybe a, vit a vitamin supplement for hair. Uh, you make sure the 13 is above 70. You make sure like all, all of the other things like the thyroid, everything else is fine. And if it was diagnosed as androgenic, as I said, we might get like other treatment, maybe tablets and other things. And on top of that, maybe somebody can have like a, a laser cap, just uh, maybe like three or maybe even once once a week, you can try that and see if that works. I guess it, on its own, it will not work. But if you use other things with controlling the stress and anxiety, all of that, which can also cause like hair loss, you might get some results. But it's, the results are not very promising for androgenic alopecia, but you might get some results. It's just you have to maybe believe in it. And then also like this is like a massage brush and that uh, can stimulate uh, blood supply going to the to the hair follicle. It's very good if you want to use it like when when you when you put a mask uh, when you're in the bath or even like after uh, having a bath or maybe when you put the treatment on your hair whether it was oil or if it was monoxyl anything you can just like stimulate all of the hair follicle. So that's quite good. Again, rosemary oil. These are there's a lot of researchers. Um, on, on rosemary oil. Rosemary oil is quite good. Uh, actually, the researchers show that the effect of, uh, of, um, of rosemary oil on uh, hair loss, uh, the results is quite similar to minoxidil. So if somebody says, well, I don't want to have minoxidil, it's a drug, I don't want to go on drugs, maybe, maybe uh, I don't want to get medicated, maybe I can just reverse my hair loss uh, naturally. So my advice is straight away, rosemary oil, and just use it, it's quite good. And it's even refreshing. It's even good, like if somebody's having like an itchy scalp. Um, um, again, like an oil, it's something. It's it's a, uh, it's a preference. It's a it's a uh, like a personal preference, a personal choice. Uh, Moroccan oil is quite good. Some people like will like other kind type of oil. If you have like a good oil which goes with your hair, just stick to it. Of course, if you have an oily hair, maybe you don't want to go ahead with with using a lot of oil because you don't want to like clog the hair uh, follicles. 
Um, so a difference, but, but some if they have a curly or frizzy, frizzy hair, having like managing your hair itself just to prevent like tangling or uh, because that can cause like more hair loss. And maybe if you have like, if you have a good oil, maybe what you can do, you can put like some uh, rosemary in it, mix it with a bit of rosemary oil. Um, Nizoral and heads and shoulders quite good. Uh, dermatologists always like it uh, because first of all, it will treat if there's any uh, fungal infection because it has ketoconazole uh, in it. But even if somebody doesn't have a fungal infection, dermatologists always like to give it because it can treat if there's any like itching or any inflammation in the hair. So if you have like your own shampoo uh, and you like, just stick to it. But you might maybe use like an Ozeral once a week or twice a week, just put it in your regime. And that can help with the other things like in, in, in uh, reversing your hair loss. Um, and then it just, we're almost there. <laughs> Don't worry, I know it was like 30 minutes. <coughs> Sorry. Psychological effect, like hair loss can cause like, can, uh, can affect like uh, the self-esteem, can cause like uh, psychological stress. Uh, it's very important, of, of course, to know like um, a stress can itself, it can lead to um, hair loss. So try maybe to distress yourself as much as you can. Um, and, um, um, and just to know like, Um, at the end, um, each each person uh, has like something. N none of us are, are perfect. All of us will have something that might uh, we will like, and something we may want to work on it a bit. But again, like beauty is 